Hello and welcome back to the MMA Bar. Today we're going to discuss the fascinating story of the most popular brothers in combat sports, Nick Diaz and Nate Diaz. We'll discuss their origin and rise to global stardom. The Diaz brothers are two of the most beloved fighters in UFC history. Nate and Nick, who have been part of the organization for the better part of two decades, have always been in the spotlight for their brash behavior, entertaining fighting, and general likability. They have always done things their own way. From pre-fight banter to mid-fight vulgarity, the California brothers bow to no man. Now, while their brash and somewhat thuggish mentalities have fueled their wildly popular careers full of championship fights and pay-per-view headliners, it may ultimately cost them in the long run. Nick and Nate are arguably two of MMA's most controversial yet enchanting figures. Loved by many, hated by plenty, the one constant notion that the Diaz brothers have maintained over the years is their their habit of making headlines. Described as Stockton's finest, both Nick and Nate Diaz love fighting, be it inside or outside the UFC octagon, and there are very few people in the sport of MMA who are capable of gaining attention to such an extent regardless of a fight inside the cage or for a brawl happening outside of it. The Diaz brothers are incredibly talented and remain quite passionate about fighting. Elder brother Nick, understandably the more mature of the two, has given us fight fans some of the finest classics in UFC. UFC history, be it against Anderson Silva, Paul Daly, or Robbie Lawler. Nick's style of fighting usually revolved around three things, wit, edginess, and most importantly, fury. Trust me when I tell you, the Elder Diaz brothers' don't give a fuck attitude is loved by hardcore fight fans, especially every time Nick decided to blatantly mock his opponent inside the octagon during a fight. However, their undying passion for fighting has probably been a vital reason for their misjudgment in the fighting community. But then again, neither Nick nor Nate cares about what you think of them. Growing up in some of the toughest streets in America, Nate and Nick Diaz certainly had a different perspective on life than the common man, a perspective that neither I nor you could probably ever understand. The Stockton-based brothers dedicated their entire lives to sharpening their skills as wild brawlers and mastering the game known as mixed martial arts. Their honor towards this game and the fact that they enjoy brutalizing people in the cage is probably what kept them going for so long, and it is one of the reasons why they have such a huge fan following in the world of MMA. Elder brother Nick was the first of the two to step foot in the MMA game in 2001 as he submitted Mike Wick via triangle choke in his debut. A product of the Caesar Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Academy, Diaz quickly went 4-0 in his pro career before suffering his first loss in the game to Jeremy Jackson. The same loss down the line played an essential role in his UFC career. However, before that, Diaz recovered from his only loss, defeating Jackson in a rematch in a win that saw him get picked up by the UFC. And in his promotional debut, he won once again dispatched Jackson in what was an initial boost to his career in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Shortly before the official UFC debut of his younger brother Nate, Nick competed in the Land of the Rising Sun, stepping up to challenge Pride lightweight champion Takanori Gomi in a catchweight bout at Pride 33. The contest was in favor of Gomi in the opening round, but you know what they say, never count out the Diaz brothers till the fight's over. Nick rallied a comeback in the second and eventually stunned Gomi and Pride fans by submitting the ladder via the Gogo Plata choke, one of the rarest submission moves in the game. If anyone still had their doubts, well, Nick Diaz had just proved all of them wrong and well and truly established his place as a household name in the world of mixed martial arts. In the meantime, younger brother Nate was in the initial phase of his MMA career and got a crack at the Ultimate Fighter Season 5. Despite his elder brother Nick trying to prevent him from following in his footsteps in the fight game, Nate Diaz decided against it. I mean, when you're a Diaz, it's pretty much impossible for someone to speak against you once you've made up your mind. In 2007, Nate Diaz entered the Ultimate Fighter Season 5, and right from the get-go, MMA fans realized that this Nate Diaz guy was a character solely based on the antics that he pulled off. Not only did Diaz compete in TUF5, but he ended up winning the whole thing, and that too in classic Nate Diaz fashion. And there it was, Nate Diaz made it into the UFC. While brother Nick was busy crafting his legacy, Nate Diaz broke into the UFC's lightweight division and took the promotion by storm. When Joe Rogan had said that Nate Diaz was a big superstar and the UFC probably didn't realize it, he was probably spitting the very truth. Sure, Nate was a beast inside the cage, but did he have the same cult following as his brother Nick? Maybe not, but on December 20th, 2015, all of that changed within the blink of an eye. In his comeback fight inside the octagon, Diaz put a clinical performance against Michael Johnson at lightweight, 
and in the post-fight interview, Nate gave the world the most iconic call-out of all time when he accused UFC's biggest superstar, Conor McGregor, of taking everything he had worked for. Now it was time to walk the walk. Nate Diaz stepped in to face Conor McGregor in the main event of UFC 196 after Rafael Dos Anjos had pulled out. The stage was set, UFC had banked on Diaz's call-out and put together one of the highly awaited fights of all time, and that too on 11 days notice. The fight started off in Diaz's favor, who dominated the fight in the early stages, but McGregor isn't someone whom you'd expect to give up that easy. The Irishman showed signs of a comeback, and courtesy of Diaz's scar tissue, the notorious one kept himself in the fight, despite being just five minutes into the bout. As round two began, it didn't take long for Diaz to finish things, as he put McGregor on his back, wreaked havoc on his face, and submitted him via a rear naked choke. And there it was, Nate Diaz on 11 days notice and without a full training camp had turned the entire MMA world upside down. And he truly wasn't surprised. Since then, Nate has rematched Conor McGregor and fought Anthony Pettis, Jorge Masvidal, and Leon Edwards, and is expected to make his last UFC appearance in the main event at UFC 279 against Kamzat Chimaev. Nick, on the other hand, made a UFC comeback in 2021 with a fight against longtime rival Robbie Lawler. Nate has less of a reputation for craziness than his elder. If you sign to fight with him, he's coming to fight you too. It's not a game, it's not a joke. You signed up to do him harm. He wants to harm you first. Aside from that, you can more or less rely on him to do his press obligations, not cause too much of a scene at weigh-ins and public relations events, and maybe even shake the other guy's hand when it's all over. Nick, however, is a whole other ball game. He's skittish in front of a camera, hates being questioned about the fight game, and generally has the feel of an animal backed into a corner as his fight draws near. Don't ask him to shake hands and kiss babies, don't think he's gonna take pictures of his opponent, and don't plan on him showing up for PR unless you damn near drag him there yourself. At any other time, he's a thoughtful man who chooses his words carefully but pulls no punches. His approach to life is the same as his approach to the fight. Leave it all out there and let people think what they will. Like Donald Cowboy Cerrone once said, the Diaz brothers' approach towards the fighting game is similar to their approach to life. Every time the two brothers took it to the cage, they've made sure to put their absolute best in the octagon and not give a shit about other people people's opinions. Throughout the years, the Diaz brothers have achieved a lot, and more importantly, have established two very unique, storied careers, from the streets of Stockton to the ring in Japan to the octagon in Las Vegas. Described as Stockton's finest, both Nick and Nate Diaz love fighting, be it inside or outside the UFC octagon, and there are very few people in the sport of MMA who are capable of gaining attention to such an extent. Well, that's the story of the Diaz brothers. Thank you for watching this video. That's all for now. Don't don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell.